<clears throat> hey everybody, it's Dr. Rick dropping in on you. Uh, I have been contemplating, uh, people have been asking me what I think about it, and I've been contemplating if I was going to comment on this Diddy thing. Uh, I'm so sick and tired of the infatuation with celebrities and how much we give celebrities passes. And the only time you can get any real traction is you got to talk about a celebrity. But there's a lot to learn here, so I'm going to address it. Plus, people that I respect have asked me uh, to weigh in on it. Um, before I get started, if you believe in the work that I do, um, at the Odyssey Project with Black Voice and Black Men Lead and so many other things. Look, uh, we are right now actually in the middle of a research project. We can definitely use your financial support. Look in the re look in the description box and click the link. Um, I also want to encourage people who see the videos like this and it's focused on uh, somewhat of a superficial conversation about uh, trending topics. I want to encourage you, if you have not followed me for any stretch of time, to navigate throughout uh, the thousands of videos that are on uh, this channel to get the depth of what it is I do so that you can know if there's something you want to subscribe to. Uh, my goal has been for 30 years to gain an understanding through research and the interpretation of that research uh, to provide tools and resources to the to the black community, to the people I love, to the people that I identify with for the sake of advancing my race. And so uh, I can go pretty deep. I have done a great deal of research on epigenetics, multi-generational transmission of trauma, African-American adolescent and young adult male violence, uh, the disintegration of the uh, African-American family, uh, the black women in depression, black men in mental health, uh, so much more. Um, so definitely know that what I do goes beyond what I'm talking about today. Now, for those who don't know, Cassie, who dated Diddy for some years, uh, came out with some pretty uh, intense allegations. Um, and so this is normally where you go allegedly, but anybody who has followed this thing, anybody who has been anywhere remotely close to it or close to people around it, probably know that it's more than allegations. Uh, but for the sake of legality, we're gonna say alleged. Uh, and came out with some stuff and basically was suing uh, Diddy for $30 million. Um, the significance of this came in the settlement of that lawsuit for $100 million, uh, which is pretty telling in and of itself. So at the root, I'm just going to be direct and straightforward in my assessment. You know, do I believe he did it? Do I believe uh, that there is some gravity to what is being uh, alleged. Dude has been garbage and trash for a long time. Dude got so many passes because he was puffy, puff daddy, puff, you know, diddy, diddy pop and whatever else he's been. He's been that dude. But anybody who has their hand on the pulse of that community who knows somebody who knows somebody will tell you that dude has been grimy. Look at the catastrophic uh, collateral damage that surrounds this guy. J-Lo had to get away from him to resurrect her career. Uh, Shine did nine years because of him. Nine times out of ten, Biggie's dead because of something he did. The rumor is, and I can only say rumor, because while I've heard it for some some pretty re reputable, I won't say reputable, believable sources, reputable talks to reputation, uh, credible, I'll put credible, meaning that believable, credible sources. He had his hands in what happened 
with Pac now, a bunch of things are going on with that because number one is uh, it could be as simple. Pac's death could have been as simple as stomping out Orlando, uh, who was a known uh, banger with bodies. Uh, it could have been simple as retaliation, but the story is that there was more behind it. Uh, that that was paper on it. That was paper with his name on it before that, uh, meaning there was a hit. Uh, blew up Kid Cootie's car behind Cassie. Uh, wanted to get at Welly behind Cassie. Uh, did some junk to J. Cole because J. Cole was riding with uh, Kendrick Lamar. Wanted to pour out. I mean, this dude and the parties that this dude threw, just ask 50 about that. But these parties that this dude threw were questionable off the bat. Um, and he's not the only one. It's so many of these guys that were, that were a part of that particular era and before that had money and power that totally, totally wrecked many lives and careers. I actually look at, I heard a story earlier this year. Uh, I never went as far as verifying it, but it seems to be an accepted thing that he gave all of, he finally gave all it, all his artists from Bad Boy, uh, their masters. Uh, that wasn't uh, an act of, character that sounds like a payoff to me that sounds like hush money that sounds like hey you know that came with a non-disclosure clause attached to it but this dude is dangerous this dude and, and again this isn't making anybody else angels there are no angels at that level everybody's out doing some stuff people are trying to maintain but there's a game to be played at that level that is going to test your character, it's going to test your integrity, and it's going to test you. And I'm telling you from what I know, you get a certain level, and then there are these barriers. And in order to get through these barriers, there has to be compromise. And where there's no compromise, there's no win. And you have to make up in your mind if you're willing to make these compromises. And it's not just in the music industry. It's at any level where people can control your exposure. And if they can control your exposure, they can control your paper. If they control your paper, they control your power. And the power that you have is contingent upon. And that contingency can be a bunch of different things. I'm telling you what I know. Um, you can move extremely quietly and amass wealth quietly and slowly and uh, do good. But if you're going to be open and you're going to get through the gates of exposure, if media is going to be your way to uh, the heights of whatever it is you're going to do, there are ways to get through it. Now, social media has sort of uh, usurped that to a certain extent. But censorship is still there. Algorithms are still there. There's so many different things and ways that this is controlled. You notice there are Bizzle, I think that's his kid's name, is a dope artist. D1 is a dope artist. Unless you're really, truly into music, you're not going to hear about them. Why? Because they're spitting real truth. They're spitting real uh, empowerment. They are speaking positivity. They are the antithesis to the narrative being pushed in the music industry, especially as it pertains to those who are in the black community. You're not going to hear about them. Why? Because they are antithetical to the narrative. And this is the thing. In order to get real true play and power where you're moving up, you're going to have to be somewhat controllable and there is going to have to be a way you can be used to destroy the very thing you're supposed to be uplifting. Now, I will never say never, so I'm not going to say it's impossible. I'm not going to say that it has never been done. What I'm going to say is when you see these people and they are running at this level, know that it came at a price. And some people are willing to destroy as many people as they need to to have what it is they want. And those of us who are trying to do it the right way, we get in where we fit in. Number one is, we don't, it's to the point now 
that the dirty is what it seems the public wants. The dirty, the corrupt, the devastation. It's what we want, it's what we gravitate to, it's what we desire. And it's that thing that we need to be concerned about. I'm not shocked about what I'm hearing about Diddy uh, in the slightest. It's not the first time I've heard it. I've heard a whole lot worse. Uh, and I think that we're about to hear the whole lot worse. I think we're gonna have our own surviving Diddy. I think that we're gonna start to think that R. Kelly was a choir boy by the time all this comes out, if it comes out. But that's my take on it. I'm gonna get off, I can talk about it, but it is what it is. It's not a whole lot to talk about. The dude is bullshit, the dude is crap. And that's all it is to it. He put some unbelievable music together for a stretch of time. He brought some people together for a stretch of time. But at the end of the day, he himself is literally death. And death follows him. So with that being said, look, I'm going to get ready to get out of here. Uh, try to finish off my day. I've got so much going on right now. You guys keep me lifted and prayed up because, again, that's a lot that I'm dealing with. Um... Thank you uh, again. If you believe in the work I do, click the like. Click going. To, uh, uh, first of all, if you like what you you've heard or hearing or you've seen it on this channel, click the like button, click the share button, subscribe. If you believe in the work I do, for those who have followed me, those who are a part of my subscribership, we really need your support. So click that uh, link and give or give to the organization's cash app account. On that note, I'm out of you guys. Have an unbelievable remainder of your day.